Hey, this is Ralph. Let's keep working on making some basic queries here. I've got my directions available and you can get the directions. Uh, just follow the link in the, in the video description. You can also get the original database there too. And I'm working on step or task number seven. Create a query for the worst of the worst new movies. I'm going to keep this that I have up here right now for my previous query because I can put it into action. I want the ID, title, IMDB rating, and movie year. Actually, I ultimately won't need the movie year. <coughs> but I guess I will show it. For an IMDB rating less than five, so I'm gonna change my criteria to less than five, and I don't want any criteria on the year, but the directions do ask that I sort by year in descending order. So on my design grid, I've got this sort row. I can go over to movie, sort in descending order, and then I can be in my design ribbon and run this. And I'll get my worst, oh, no, 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 I must have screwed up somehow with my criteria because I've got some high rated movies. Let me head back over to my design grid. Uh, I typed in greater than five by accident. I'm supposed to type in a less than five. Did you catch that when I typed it? Let me run this again. Here we go, this is my worst of the worst. And I can tell the most recent one was the beginning of the Great Revival all the way up there. And 1944, I accused my parents, Prince of Space, 1959. So now they're sorted in reverse order. Okay, save object as, and this one is supposed to be called worst of the worst new movies. Click OK. Home ribbon. So now my queries are just really getting there. So I've got a few more to work on. Another query, create a query saved as January rentals. That This is task eight, by the way, that shows the rental ID, movie title. Ooh, we're mixing in a couple tables here. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start from scratch, create query design. And I can tell, let's see, I'm gonna need the rental ID, movie title, customer name, checkout date for all rentals. So I know checkout date, that's in my video rentals table, so I need to have that. It also asks for customer name, that's in my customers table. But it also wants movie titles, that's in my movies table. So I need to have all three of these tables. And by the way, they don't need to be arranged like I'm arranging them right here. Um, but I'm just doing it just makes, it looks neater to me. Now when I have these three tables up here in my uh, query design grid, they, of course they seem like relationship lines, but these are technically join lines. It's not my goal to get into joins right now, but I just wanted to point that out. When you use two or more tables as part of the query, it's joining. And it does come in pretty, cr it is pretty important in some more advanced queries, but I want you to not worry about it right now, just so you know that these are joins as opposed to relationship lines. Very similar, but different. All right, so let's see. In this query, we're looking for um, January, so I'm gonna show the rental ID. So I need the rental ID, and this is task eight. The movie title, where's my movie title? There it is. And the customer name, there it is and the checkout date. So I need to go to the videos, checkout date. And let me just go ahead and preview this. I'll, in fact, preview or run doesn't really make too much of a difference here. And I've got 8,000 results. There's 8,000 transactions. And of course we can see the movie title and the customer's name and the checkout date. Okay, now the criteria though, all rentals that occurred in January of 2013. Now in this one, we actually have legitimate dates here. So I'm going to use date field. So checkout date, January 2013. There's a couple of ways we could write this. Um, with dates though, and by the way, if you didn't know, you could always jump over and do help. Let me just go ahead and bring this up and help. Sometimes help is not very helpful, but let's see. Uh, I'll just type in the word query with dates. Update data, to, yeah, we don't do an update data by using a query. And let me just kind of scroll through here. Love it if it was super obvious for us here. Um, what about criteria dates? It's pretty easy. I just was hoping that I would like you to be able to rely on access help for some quick information. Just goes to show, can't really rely on that. Let me do this for you though. I'm gonna pop open my, uh, just check this out real quick, Google access query dates. Man, you gotta love access, or Google, right? Working with dates and access queries, examples of query criteria. 
<clears throat> uh, the date diff function, we'll use that one pretty soon. I like that one a lot. But here we go. Let's see, there's some of that. Date add, these are all more complicated date functions. I'm just looking through, they got a lot of nice examples on here. Here's a lot of the keyword uh, wild cards and stuff. Pair of quotes, nots, greater than, equal to. A lot of good stuff there. I'm just kind of scrolling pretty quickly through. Numeric criteria. This is a nice page. I'm going to have to remember this and point it out as a resource. Here's the one I wanted to show you, though. Here's when you're working with dates. You just have to put the pound sign in front and, and after. So you basically you can close them in pound signs. And with lesser than or greater than signs, there you go. I'm going to make a note of that. And that's a, kind of a nice little quick resource there. All right. So if I type in greater than equal to pound sign. Oh, let's see, get that cursor out of the way. Pound sign. Let's see, I'm looking for January. So I'll do 1 1 13 pound sign. Let's see what we get now. Of course, actually, now that's going to be lame because these are all 2013. And I'll do an and less than equal to, <clears throat> excuse me, pound sign. Um, let's see, what am I doing just January? Yep, 1 dash 31 dash 13 pound sign. There we go. And let's go ahead and preview this. And I'm getting just my Januarys. Remember, I had 8,000 results before. Now I have 2,144. And that's what I tell you in the solution. So basically, that's one way to do it right there. So that's pretty good. Now let me show you another quick way to write this. Between pound sign 1-1-13 one dash, one dash and pound sign 1-31-13 one dash, one dash, pound sign. There we go. This one will work too. And we get our 2,144 results. Okay, I think I'll pick this up in another video. Oh, wait, let me go ahead and save first at least. Let's take care of that. File, save object as, let's see, this one is called January Rentals. Click OK. Oh, there we go. So that's all saved. All right, now we'll pick it up in the next video.